Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the Playwright MCP to manually test your site and create a test report or even a test plan. No code. I'm literally going to show you how you can just use the Playwright MCP to just test your site without actually knowing how to code. Yes. Um, I don't even know if this is useful for you. This is just me playing around with stuff. But I really want you to be curious. Just watch this video and then like open your mind and think, is this actually going to help me in my workflow? Is it going to help me in my job? That's up to you. You're the expert in your testing scenario, in your job. Um, just be mindful, take it away and think about, can this work for you? I don't know. Do let me know in the comments though. Right, let's dive in. So I'm in VS Code and I have uh, my extensions here and I've got the MCP servers installed. So that's the Playwright one that I'm using and I'm gonna go ahead and start the server. If you haven't got Playwright installed, you can click on this little world icon and it will open up a website where you can just click on the install button. Okay, so that's cool. Now let's go over, this is a, I'm in VS Code, but I have absolutely no code. <laughs> and sometimes a manual tester can come into uh, something like VS Code with no code experience and use it because it's actually really useful for prompts and for running prompts and for using the chat mode. So that's something as well that could be really cool for you to explore. So here I've got a, a prompt file that's about manually testing, a manual test prompt. Um, so what I can do is, this is basically just saying, you know, the, the, the tools that I want it to use, which is the Playwright MCP and how, to, how it should manually test um, a site. I'm gonna go ahead and just run play. That's gonna open up a chat mode and um, and basically it's going to ask me for a scenario. So I'm going to say use uh, filtering, oh it's in caps, use filtering, um, filtering the podcast. So I want it to test that scenario on debbie.codes. That's my website. I'm going to go ahead and press play and I'm going to go ahead and let it do its thing. It's opening up the Playwright MCP server and it's opened my website, it's navigated the URL, it's gone to the podcast section. I can hold my hands up so you can see I'm doing nothing here. And uh, it can see the podcast. It's gonna go ahead and start exploring that page. And I didn't give it any other instructions. You saw, I literally just said the filtering. So it's clicking on that filtering and it's uh, testing out to see what happens on that page. Does it do what it's meant to do, et cetera, et cetera. Now this is, um, really cool because I can, um, if I'm manually testing a site, I can just go away and have coffee and let it do its thing. Um, and then, you know, uh, I don't know, you can get other things done while this is being done. Um, it's very useful. I think it's useful. It's really cool to watch anyway. That's at least one thing. Uh, anyway, it's going ahead and it's doing its thing there. Now, you might have noticed that I have down here um, the Playwright Tester. Um, and I'll just quickly show you that while it's creating the man, the file that I asked it for. This is in the .github folder under chat modes. I've got a playwright tester .chat mode. All that is, is just me giving it an instructions, um, responsibilities of what it is. It's a, it's a manual tester and I'm just giving it the tools that it should use, that's all. Um, it's really cool because it's like, you can kind of define its role, its core responsibilities. Um, but you can also just use agent mode if you don't have um, this chat mode or don't want to create one. All right, let's close that. Let's have a look at the report that it has created. This is super exciting. Um, let's pull this over a little bit. It's closed the browser because I did ask it to close the browser after it finished. And um, it's uh, created this and it's giving me a beautiful summary there in the chat. Um, but it's created this file, this test report. So let me go and keep this so I can see it a little bit better. I've got the test date, the URL, the scenario, the overview, the steps it performed, the uh, access the podcast section, it clicked on the podcast link and navigation, the results, successfully navigated to the podcast page, observation, identified available filters, it tested the playwright filtering section, the Nuxt filter, the all filter uh, that it resets, um, it tested the filter, test results, functionality working correctly, the URL changes, the page titles, the episode counting, um, total episodes 29, playwright episodes 13, next 11, testing episodes 13, all filters functional, yes. Um, clear visual design, thank you. <laughs> Intuitive navigation, consistent behavior, responsive updates, um, page updates immediately when filters are applied, informative feedback, episode counts, help users understand result quantities, accessible labels, yes, I'm good. Um, areas of excellence, performance, Filtering appears to be instant, yay. SEO friendly, each filter has its own URL, making content shareable. 
breadcrumb context page titles clearly indicate the current filter state and content quality all episodes are properly tagged and relevant to their categories um, so this is really, really um, interesting. The issues found, none, all tested functionality works as expected. I could have thrown a bug in there just to kind of like see if it came up with things. And some recommendations, I like this, visual enhancement, consider adding a visual indicator, like highlighting or a different color to show which filter is currently active. Um, I thought that was already there. I'll have to keep a check on that. Uh, filter combinations, consider adding the ability to combine. Whoa, that's really clever. Combine multiple filters. Maybe we could have like playwright and AI. Oh, wow. Ha, ha. I never thought of that. Episode count preview, consider showing episode counts on hover. That's interesting as well. Um, so this is really cool. I've just got some new ideas now that I can perform uh, and, and improve on. And the overall assessment is a pass. All functionality tested successfully with no issues found. Now, I just generated that in just a couple of minutes. This is really cool. I learned something. I can make some improvements. And I didn't even write any code. Now, let's go ahead and create a test plan. Someone asked me this. Like, have you created test plans? I've never created a test plan in my, my life. So this is me creating a test plan with no idea how to create a test plan. Some of you out there create test plans. And maybe this is going to be useful to you. I don't know. Uh, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Let me see what I can do with this. So I've got another prompt that I created. Um, and let's roll it on here. Test plan prompt. Now, this is so exciting. I kind of really, I, I think this is so cool. So um, let me see the test plan. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, let's create a new, a new one here. And let's go ahead. And if I run this, will it tell, ask me what to do? I actually didn't ask it. I didn't tell it. Create a compressive test. I'll help you create it. It's going to start exploring. No, let me, I don't need to do that. Okay. No, I read the manual test. All right. Okay. Let's, it's, um, it's gone ahead and found the report. So I probably should have created in the actual um, prompt file to ask it to give, give me something and then I can, you know, but it, it found it anyway, because there's only one file in there, but I could improve that. Nevertheless, I've asked it to create a test plan. It's gone ahead and it's running through the um, the report. And it's basically um, using the MCP server to do all the actions based on the report. So imagine someone gave you a report and said, create a test plan based on this report. This is what I'm doing. Again, I'm not writing any code. I'm literally just plain English, just writing stuff down or getting the AI to write things and running things based on it. So now it's conducted a comprehensive manual testing of the podcast filtering functionality and it's going to create a detailed test plan based on its findings of the existing test report. Okay, this is exciting. Now, again, I didn't tell it to close the browser. I should probably do that. Um, so that kind of things that I can definitely improve on. Um, so while it's working there, let's go ahead and have a look at this uh, test plan prompt, which basically just says, like, create a compre comprehensive test plan based on existing test reports or manual testing findings. Um, so you could have pasted something in there. I had the report, so so that works. And then the analyze phase, document current functionality, the test plan structure. Again, you could tell it which structure you want it, depending on the kind of structure you need. Uh, and the test case format. See, this is the format that I've told it I think makes sense. Uh, the risk assessment um, and some test plan output, best practices, deliverables, test plan document and I can you know put in here uh, close the browser after tab after completing the test plan creation great so again this is kind of just uh, really easy to do with a prompt and again you can say um, oh it's actually just going to create a jumped I love when it jumps it's like jumped let me go back there quickly and I can just put in um, ask the user for uh, for a test report, or what else did it say? For test report uh, or manual findings, or manual testing findings. So now it's going to ask and prompt for that, which is kind of nice because then I can kind of, you know, keep track of things. So this is my test plan. Let's go ahead and press keep, and let's look at this. Um, I've got my test date, the application, the feature under test, the test environment, the browsers. Uh, the platforms, um, again, I could remove that if I wasn't interested in that. Um, let's see what it did. What will be tested? Filter, tag functionality, um, URL navigation routing, page titles. This is a scope. 
what will not be tested? External podcast links functionality, audio player functionality, social media integration, search functionality not present, backend API performance or content management system. That's pretty cool to know what's not going to be tested. I like this. Test objectives. The primary goal is verify all filter tags work correctly, ensure the URL routing functions properly for each filter, validate episode counts, confirm user interface, success criteria, all nine filter tags function correctly, URLs updated, episode counts match, no broken links or missing content, um, compliance for accessibility and performance meets baseline requirements, primary URL, filter URLs, total episodes, available filters, test case inventory, priority high. Like, so this is really cool. I could go ahead and keep just reading this out, but like this is just being created in a matter of like, what, a minute and a half? Um, and these are the test steps here. Like this is the, this is really amazing. Click on the all filter, verify the URL changes, verify page title changes to podcast interviews, verify episode count shows 29 episodes, verify all podcast episodes are displayed. Uh, expected outcome, all episodes are shown with current, with correct count and page title pass if all 29 episodes are visible and correctly labeled. Love this. Um, so this is just testing different tags, uh, nothing much interesting there. And then we've got, so it's actually gone ahead and tested all the tags, this is quite nice. And the mentoring, uh, the filter reset functionality, it started that pass if all 29% are visible and page elements are correct. Direct URL navigation. Um, verify page loads, verify collect filters active. Direct URL navigation works for all filter pages. Browser back and forward navigation. So this has really gone and created a hell of a lot of stuff here. Page title updates, episode count display, content relevance validation, pa visual filter indications, and it's given a priority as well. Start on the main podcast page, click on any filter tag, current filters visible, passive users can easily identify which filter is active. Um, filter list accessibility, all filter elements are accessible. Interesting. Keyboard navigation, whoa, I never test keyboard navigation. This is really cool. Category accessibility, use keyboard only, no mouse. Oh my God. Mobile responsiveness, test on mobile device, uh, performance testing, uh, page load, cross browser compatibility, um, and edge case and error handling, test with JavaScript disabled. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I don't want to test with JavaScript disabled because that's just not what I do. Um, I don't want to uh, don't want to do cross browser testing right now. Let's remove that. So as you can see, I can modify this test plan. Multi tag episode verification. Um, we can't. We don't have that. So I could remove that test case because that does not exist. That's a functionality. Or I could leave it in there and it would basically like not work. Um, actually, let's leave it in there and see what happens. Um, feature podcast section. And there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, okay, this is cool. And let's just remove, let's remove Firefox, Safari, Edge latest versions and let's just leave Chrome for now. And let's not, well, we can leave Chrome, mobile, doesn't really, let's remove mobile browsers for now. And let's just do desktop. Okay. You could, again, you could do tablet mobile, it's fine. Um, this is really cool, secondary testing, let's remove that. And again, I could have actually just asked I, um, the AI to just remove these performance testing. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, now, this is the thing, you can decide, you can, you, can, you can refine this down. I wanna go ahead and actually um, see if it can test this. Now I'm gonna to have to close this browser manually because it's opened. I didn't actually ask it to close it earlier. So just always close the browser just in case. I'm gonna open a new tab here. Uh, it's got this test plan in this context. So it's, it's here so we can see it can use it. And I'm just gonna go and say, manually test the, um, or run the test plan. Well, that we say, run the test plan to check everything works as expected. <laughs> this is really interesting, right? Again, 
I have no idea if this is going to be useful to you. Uh, I'm just giving you ideas that you can walk away with, be curious about. And um, is this going to help you in your job? Is this going to make you more efficient? Is it going to help you get things done faster? Is it going to give you more confidence in your manual testing approach? If it does, then go ahead and play around with this and give it a try. I think it's really cool. I think it might save you time. Could be completely wrong. But I'm definitely going to use it as a um, a way for me to check my website. Um, no code involved. This is literally just running pure natural language to test my website. And I think this is really cool. Uh, I wonder if it's going to pick up on anything. Um, I should probably, again, break something and let it kind of see what report that it, you know, it comes back with. But I can, I, I like the fact that I can visually just watch what it's doing instead of just reading through a whole report. I can actually say, yeah, it actually did do that. It did click that. I did see the DevRel episodes there when it clicked on DevRel. It's going to go back and forward. There's a lag in the page title updates during navigation. That's something I didn't know about. Um, it's a minor issue, but the core functionality works. Um, episode count shows one episode for, for mentoring. It's actually clicked on two um, things there, DevRel and mentoring. That's interesting. So it's now going to create the compre comprehensive test report based on all the testing I've completed. So again, I've gone from uh, a test report to a, to a test plan and then the test plan to a test report. I don't know what I'm doing here, but you can go ahead and take this away and uh, play around with it and see, does this make sense to you? Is this useful? There's so many things you can do with the Playwright MCP that like, it's actually just mind blowing. It's mind blowing what it can do in such a small amount of time. I'd love you to take this and um, and work on your website and work on, on something bigger than just my personal website. And uh, let me know what it does. Let me know if this is useful, if it's helpful. Uh, send me a comment in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. This is just creating a report here. We could go ahead and read the report, but it's pretty much here. Tell, told me everything. And um, I can go ahead and, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and test more things on my site and see what it finds. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.